you look at the world through my eyes when I was in high school, uh, there was no Asia. And there was precious little of any other part of the world. I had a student want to know why all of archaeology class was pretty much about sites in Western Europe. And it was a good question. You know, wh why is that? American educators remained Eurocentric when people expertise on Asia was needed across the curriculum. So how do you respond to that situation? When we started the Asian Studies Development Program, we were very specific in that we were targeting faculty who were not Asianists. So the idea was how do we launch a program on Asian Studies uh, that will help faculty who are not experts in the field to begin infusing Asian content responsibly into the undergraduate classroom. We started with that first three-week institute, then we started adding NEH institutes. We started with our first five-week field study in China. Now in a typical summer, we'll hold two or three summer residential institutes in Hawaii, a field seminar somewhere in Asia, anywhere from six to ten workshops on the U.S. Uh, mainland, the continental U.S. We are the only national organization that has this kind of focus and offers this kind of resource. At this stage, I think we've had over maybe four or five hundred institutions in every uh, state in America with thousands of faculty that have participated in these different programs. The infusing program that I attended in 1999 was completely transformational. Admittedly, I think at that point in my career I was somewhat of an, in an academic rut, and this was a really refreshing opportunity to remind myself that I'm also a student. For the Infusing Institute, most of us don't have a lot of background uh, in the Asian Studies field. I learned how to integrate Chinese and Japanese studies into my American history survey courses and my world history survey courses. So we're all coming to this from different points of view and, and really excited about learning the material. We become friends as well as scholar friends. We really became a support group for one another with new ideas, pedagogies, and the spirit that, that we can, you know, really do something creative in our classroom. The atmosphere of collegiality, the kind of familiar atmosphere, plus this beautiful environment makes for an extraordinary place to get work done. I think one of the really essential things about ASDP is that the headquarters are in Hawaii. Hawaii is a special place. Our population is 70% uh, Asians and Pacific Islanders. And you look at people around, you see this is actually a world that Confucius is talking about. To accelerate the pace with which we can interface most effectively with Asian cultures, Hawaii has a role to play. Hawaii is the place in the United States where I have experienced Asia most profoundly. One of the most transformative experiences that this program has to offer are the field seminars to Asia. It's one thing to learn from books, it's another thing entirely to go to a country, experience the sights, the sounds, the smells, the foods, the language in the air. You begin to really feel a lot more comfortable when you're talking about China, when you're talking about Japan. I was teaching about China, but I had actually never been there. And so I was able to go to the Great Wall. We went to the Summer Palace. We went, of course, to the Forbidden City. With ASDP, I have traveled to Korea. I have traveled to China. Um, I have been on NEH Japan Studies programs. We worked with some of the best Chinese history and economic and philosophy professors in the business. And it was a wonderful opportunity to meet some Chinese colleagues with whom I maintained relationships. And here I was learning about China about um, Confucian philosophy, Taoism, culture that I had really not been exposed to before. And for me, that transformation was then translated to my students. When I got back, I called together everybody who taught Asian studies at PCC, and we started an Asian studies committee. So I went from a person who really didn't know much at all about Asian literature to having this become really a primary interest, and it's led to the development of two new courses. I've developed five new classes, and most of the content I have 
used papers and presentations and research that I've done related to ASDP. With ASDP, we've brought in not only uh, East Asian religion courses, but we've also been able to establish the first Chinese language course and the technical college system in South Carolina. Uh, as one of the participants in the Bridging Cultures Project, uh, Howard Community College has now developed an Asian studies major. So we have students who not only are taking a class, but are thinking about making this their academic discipline. Within my own campus's experience, Asia is now on the map, whereas five years ago, it was not. After the third year of our institutes, um, one of the community colleges suggested that we have a national conference. There's an atmosphere and the joy of getting together and sharing ideas and learning from each other. It's not like your stereotypical academic environment where there's competition. Because we're not concerned with shoring up or justifying who we are and what our discipline is, we actually learn and collaborate with one another in a completely different way, in an invigorating way. What you find in, in the ASDP is that there is, a, there is a sense that we're all in this together, that it's a, it's a shared uh, enterprise, and so it's all about cooperation. I learn as much from the colleagues who, who are participants, as much from the scholars who present, and it's inspirational. It's not just the teachers on front of the room and the professors taking the class sitting out there in the audience. It's a real interactive environment where people learn from one another. The interesting thing is they allow you to keep up with these scholars. You have access to them. We can call them up on our cell phone, email them. I mean, Hello. One of the most valuable things from my standpoint is doing that also helps me to understand more fully their fields and their problems and those issues. And so it's perfectly symbiotic. Every person I meet at the conference, everyone I engaged with at the Infusing Institute last summer, they've become uh, not only a colleague that I can turn to for help on research or for making a connection that I hadn't before in my teaching, but also for my personal life. I can count them my friends, and that is, a, is unique and something I will always treasure. What can I say about an experience that changes the way you think about the world, the way you think about how you teach, and gives you the strength and confidence to do things that you otherwise would not do in your home institution? It's a great place to be.